Welcome back to War Thunder Weekly News. This week 1.95 dropped and it came with some surprises we weren't expecting and didn't come with some surprises we were expecting. So be sure to hit that subscribe button because where is the Apache? So what happened is last week I was making my video. There was plenty of models of the Apache seemingly completely done in the files. And as I was uploading the video, Sin 10 AP came out saying that there's going to be no Apache in this patch, which is strange because the models are completely done. I should them my last video when people were discussing this or whatever and this brought up this fact that the models were there and sim basically said that there's a lot of strange models in the files but the story doesn't end there it gets a little stranger as on the playstation store it was spotted a page to purchase the apache bundle for 75 i think it was australian dollars the page was luckily archived on the internet archive site the bundle was claimed to come with a H64A Piton, rank 6 for the US, 15 days of premium, and 2,000 Golden Eagles. And in fact, even had a picture of the H64A Piton. The rest of it is just your standard War Thunder bundle in the PlayStation Store jargon. The store team dude, when asked about this, I guess, says it doesn't mean anything. Which, I think it does mean something. I think it means the H64A Piton is going to be a premium that you can purchase. Because it doesn't end there. This other website called True Achievements, which seems to track achievements and stuff for Xbox, had actually two entries for an Apache Piton pack. Now when this was brought up, the store team dude said that it's not an actual Xbox store site, so don't mislead people. However, the page on this website about the Apache pack had a big old paragraph that was quite detailed and sounded very much like something that you'd see in a War Thunder pack. And this True Achievements website doesn't seem like they just make random entries or things. They seem to have a pretty sophisticated setup where they can even scan achievements for games that haven't released yet. Now, see, as I said, there was two entries onto this website and they seem pretty legit, but one of them actually was marked with a release date of March 9th, 2020. Many people are assuming this is the release date for 1.97, which would make kind of sense because it is about three months from now, which is typically the time it takes for Gaijin to make a new update. I personally don't think that this is an absolute release date. I don't know where the information for this came from, so there could be many variables in here. But if it is something that Gaijin put forward, it's more likely just an ideal date that they'd want to hit. But I doubt it's actually for sure the release date. So it's a big question. Why weren't the Apaches in this patch? And are they going to be in the next patch or are they just going to sit in the files forever? Some people have speculated that they didn't add them because they'd be a bit overpowered compared to everything else. So perhaps in the patch that we do get these, we'll get something to counter them. I don't know, some super anti-air or something. Well, I guess anti-air is already pretty super with its missiles and all that. What do you think could counter 16 Hellfire missiles that can penetrate 1,100 millimeters of armor? Last news about the helicopters, it seems the British one will be using star streaks as anti-air missiles. This was found by a data miner. Not much else I could add to that as, well, we already know what star streaks are like. They're in-game already, so they're going to be on the helicopter, apparently. No word of brimstones or anything else, though. Uh, some things that we were totally not expecting is there's quite a few more planes in the Swedish tree than what we had found in the files. Well, really, it was just a few more J-21s, which I am very interested in flying. I hear the jet ones actually kind of suck. Not too surprising there. Like past tech trees, Gaijin had made a little template of all the vehicles in it, as well as some that are planned. And though these are the planned are some interesting ones. Well, one of them was a S-17BS, which is probably just a B-17B, but worse or better, I don't know. But of the more interesting ones, it was the J-35D Draken, which is a Mach 2 Delta Wing fighter and looks amazing. I'm not an expert on modern jets, never really play top tier, so I can't say too much on how well it'll do or how great of a plane it'll be, but I can say that it'll look awesome flying around, being all Delta Wing and everything. I also heard some stuff about the J-37 Vegan coming, however, I was never really able to track exactly where those came from. I think it was on some Gaijin livestream, which I don't really feel like watching all the way through for a hint towards maybe a jet. But they also had two other premiums planned. One was the MM-406, which is a finished modification of the SM-406 given a lag 3 engine and a MG-151 in the nose opposed to the terrible French 20. Although Wikipedia says that because MG-151s were kind of hard to come by in Finland sometimes they'd give them a Russian 50 in the nose instead. It'd be kind of interesting if you could switch out the nose mounted gun. However, an MG-151 is going to be almost entirely better than a Russian 50. And the final one was the KS-60B which is a jet trainer you used as a ground attacker, or maybe it was teaching them how to ground attack, and to my understanding has no internal guns. However, it did have quite a few wing mounts and could carry some 
I believe, 30 millimeter Aiden gun pods. I think that would be a very fun plane to fly around, especially if it gets some very interesting ordnance. The Wikipedia page states that it could carry not only gun pods, but air to air missiles and air to surface missiles. So the future of the Swedish tree looks pretty good, kind of Finnish, which gives me hope that we'll see some Finnish tanks, at least premiums, in the Swedish tank tree when that comes around. However, Gudgeon does have a reputation of letting me down when it comes to meme tanks. Operation Frost has finally become active, and if you are still unsure of what vehicles you want to grind for, as it's going to be quite hard to grind for all six of them, you can actually take out the Tis M and J6 and 1 in the Dynamic Campaigns. The setup you need to do this is on a Kalingol in 1944, and really just restart it till you get a mission involving one of those planes. The Tis MA was more surprising to me than I was expecting. I was expecting it to be some slow Russian heavy fighter, but from what I could tell, it actually kept a pretty good speed. It was quite durable, could take a lot of hits before it went down. It had five frontal facing guns. I'm not sure what calibers they were. You want to say a good few of them were at least 20s. The guns didn't seem to take out ground targets too well, and it didn't seem to have an internal bomb bay, so I don't know how well it's going to be for ground battles. However, for air battles and ground pounding, I think it'll be pretty good because you have a lot of guns, which means you can take out a lot of soft targets. The other plane, the J6N1, I feel is going to be a great aircraft. At just about any reasonable pop battle rating, having six 20mm cannons will be pretty great. And then 250s, just for the sake of it. Now, they are Japanese 20s, so you might have to get a little bit used to how they aim, but I feel like this is going to be the plane that you will use to grind through the Japanese tree if you still need to get through it by now. It's not going to be a another Type 94 2. Of its flight characteristics, it was pretty fast. I think it had a good climb rate. I can't really put it against anything. It wasn't an actual match, it was just against bots. It turned pretty all right. It wasn't a zero, but it wasn't terrible. It also could carry four small bombs or two much larger bombs. I think the larger bombs were 250 kilograms, which could be really good for cast in ground battles, which is great because Japan needs some better fighters that have good ordnance. The B7A can't do all the work. Come on now, Gaijin. Where's my B6N? <laughs> Last bit of news I have for you is a Q&A from the developers. And I had some interesting things. Overall, it's actually kind of short, though. There's only four ground questions, and they all had some pretty short answers. The first one was asking for the M1s to be foldered, and they said, maybe in the future. Then there's a question about a SAM for Japan, and they said that, yes, we're working on such vehicle. Now, a SAM for Japan is interesting because they don't really seem to have anything that's compared to the other vehicles. The most likely candidate would seem to be the Type 93 which is a Toyota with a bunch of missiles in the back. Could this possibly be the game's first technical? The missiles that carry are basically just Japanese stingers, and as you could assume, the Toyota does not have any main guns. Then there's a the question if you could have some sort of customized camo, adding logs and camo nets to your tank. And Gaijin replied with some long-winded thing saying that it would be weird and hard, And but they ended their statement with, we might have such a system in the future though, which could be really interesting if they do it right and let you really get in there and customize things up. But even being able to put a camo net on your tank would be pretty fun. And the final question was asking for if they could have it so destroyed tanks and ground RB don't just disappear. And Gaijin's response was, in my opinion, comically trivial, saying, oh, but you know, you respond multiple times in the map. I've said this before, I'll say it again. The way you do it is you keep it there, but if a player bumps into it, or maybe even shoots it, it falls over and is no longer there. Having it just simply disappear suddenly is so gross looking. Like, not even other free-to-play games look that gross when the dead body of the tank just suddenly just is gone. For air questions, there was only two. The first one was basically asking for more float planes, and they said, yes, we agree. In naval battle, seaplanes have their niche. We plan to add similar vehicles in the future, too. Which is great. People have always loved float planes. There's a big old meme on it on the dot .live page. At least there was when I hung around there. I really hope that we see some Italian float planes, because they had some really weird and cool ones. The other air question was, how far in the future are we going to go with jets. As the performance of many modern jets isn't just public knowledge, and nor do countries seem to want to hand it out. And Gaijin basically came out and said that they plan to have third and fourth generation aircraft, and perhaps even newer ones, which could only assume was fifth generation aircraft, which is modern stuff. Now this might cause a lot of hype to some people, however, to me, I kind of already knew this. Gaijin has been going in that direction. And a lack of information on the vehicle's performance is not a factor in the game really anymore. I just talked about earlier in this 
this video, a vehicle that was only ever a wooden mock-up gets in the game somehow. Like the way they get information for the modern tanks and stuff, it's all estimations and they're pretty solid estimations. I don't think they make them up. Maybe they do, but that's how they're going to be going in the future. Just estimating this stuff. There's two helicopter questions. The first one's asking for a PVE mode and they already added helicopters to tank PVE. So that's not really necessary. The other one is asking for more low tier helicopters without missiles and rockets. And they said because they have low combat efficiency that they're not gonna add those yet. The yet is a big one because I really wanted some low tier helicopters that rely entirely on rockets or bombs. I find the H1G, which is the only helicopter that doesn't have any missiles, to be the most fun of all the helicopters I've played. Mainly because you get in there and actually compete with the enemy, not sit on the hill and shoot ATGMs till you need to reload. The last six questions were for Navy, starting off with one asking by the HMS Hawkins of all heavy cruisers was added as it's quite outclassed by all the World War II vessels. Gaiji's reply was that it's like the founder of the class of heavy cruisers and they just couldn't avoid it. I find this answer really annoying because they do a lot of things for more gameplay focused reasons. But when it comes to adding heavy cruisers, we just had to add this bad one because it's so symbolic or something. There was some barring long question about how pressing the X shows you everything. The answer was really vague and basically a no, so I'm not going to bother. There was a request for better sinking system which I'm assuming they mean like visually how the ship sinks and they said yeah we're gonna make things more majestic there was the one question that I actually care about this Q&A which was the ship you showed on the MMORPG.com website had anti-ship missiles are you gonna add those or not Gaijin's answer basically came down to we're doing internal tests the results will dictate whether we're gonna see anti-ship missiles in game or not now here's the thing is Gaijin's internal tests also determined that large ships were born so is that as trustworthy as these tests are going to be? We're most likely going to get anti-ship missiles and they're most likely going to kill all the fun that Navy currently imposes as the people who want anti-ship missiles are typically the kind of people who want more modern jets and tanks and I assume aren't the same people playing the heavy cruisers that we have now. Otherwise, they wouldn't be asking for more modern stuff. There is some question that I couldn't understand and had a long answer so I don't want to bother to read it because this video is getting long enough. Then they asked a question about if Jack Japanese AP bombs would finally work and Gaijin said yeah we have plans for that but they've been saying that they have plans to fix that for I want to say a few years now although I wonder would AP bombs if they were functioning correctly be any more useful against tanks as my understanding of AP bombs is they're just big and heavy and so they can punch through the top of the deck so I'd assume that you'd be able to penetrate the top of a tank. However, if you were to drop a 500 or 800 kilogram bomb next to a tank anyways, it would die. So I guess that doesn't really matter. But maybe if AP bombs are working correctly, Gadgets will add more of them, like the British AP bombs, also known as the Grand Slam. Final point for the video is that I'd like to thank my YouTube members. Starting with a new member, CT Center. Then there's Grimace, Samurai, I Like Them Thick, Ed Nahui Sukabliet, Mighty Peppers, Pointless Gun Sinks and Waffly Joker 6. I'd like to thank them very much. YouTube members get videos uploaded to them a little bit early, get a unique Discord role, and emojis during streams. If you want to join, it's only $5 a month. Just gotta hit click that join button. Besides that, if you have any comments, concerns, or questions, you can hit me up down below on my Discord. If you've liked the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, don't hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I make War Thunder Weekly news videos every Sunday, make random videos throughout the week, and I like to stream on Saturdays. So be sure to hit that bell icon to be notified anytime I upload a thing. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. In the terms of bonus news, a data miner by the name of Godzilla5549 had found some files for ship guns. Most of them were kind of like, oh, can we have that ship or ah, that wouldn't be too much surprise. But one of them was for a 308 millimeter gun, which happens to be the cannon on the Bismarck. So Gaijin, where the hood at? But really, a random question out there, should I get Red Dead Redemption 2 or The Outer Worlds? I've been having a bit of a cowboy kick watching a lot of forgotten weapons about old western guns. So I've been kind of feeling that, though I don't really know much else about the game. Like, is the story good? Is the gameplay good? The Outer Worlds, I have a good feeling the story probably decent, and I really like Fallout games, that's why I care about it at all. However, the most thing I care about in Fallout games is the setting. Random Spaceland, I don't really care about. 
I'm also really concerned whether the gameplay is good at all. Like the Fallout New Vegas and 3 gameplay was actually quite awful. And Fallout 4 cleared up a lot of those issues. The game had its own problems. But gameplay, like shooting, walking around, talking to people, besides the stupid dialogue system, was real natural and felt good. And those were like necessary updates to the Fallout system for the most part. And I'm concerned that Obsidian didn't understand that and they wanted to stick to their New Vegas-ness. Oh, and Merry Christmas.